Evening everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Leighton House March CG901 for the 1990 Formula 1 World Championship. And in the car is Ivan Capelli. Now the CG901 started 1990 off the back of a pretty disastrous 1989 season for the March team. Uh, no points were scored with their car for that year, even though they started the first... I think it was the first three or four races of the 89 season with their 88 car and scored all the points with that car but uh, the 89 car was a complete disaster but uh, for 1990 they went uh, a bit more extreme because of course they had Adrian New on board a very much unknown at the time Formula 1 car designer or indie car designer or anything designer at the time because he was uh, quite well known in indie cars and other things like that but uh, in Formula 1 he was just finding his feet and uh, he put this car together and uh, a lot of his trademark uh, things turned up on the car as well, including the uh, narrow nose and the sculpted rear bodywork which would appear later on on the Williams FW14 uh, and 14B, i.e. this thing here, very sculpted rear bodywork. Uh, they went into 1990 uh, with this revolutionary looking car but uh, results were scarce and the car was generally unreliable um, and also had a tendency to fail to qualify as well. It was sort of difficult to set up. But uh, they went into the, the uh, Mexican Grand Prix that year and uh, both failed to qualify. But at the very next race in France, on the very smooth Paul Ricard circuit, both Ivan Capelli and Maurizio, uh, Maurizio Gugerman, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, ran first and second in the race. They didn't, they, uh, they didn't qualify first and second, but they ran first and second for a good majority of the race. Uh, sadly for Gujamin, though, his engine blew up uh, not long from the end, and also uh, Ivan Capelli uh, finished second in the end, but uh, had to succeed to uh, Alain Prost Ferrari. Of course, it's uh, sort of the times that uh, haven't really changed, is it? It's always the big teams with the big budget, with the big drivers that always uh, outclass the smaller teams, smaller drivers, and all things like that. Um, it's sort of something that's never changed really in Formula One, but uh, yeah, it's that, and uh, that was pretty much it for uh, the 1990 season for this car. Uh, they scored one more point throughout the whole season, uh, a sixth place uh, for Gugerman, I think, at the Belgian Grand Prix. But that was it for the car. It was unreliable, uh, and I think I think it was just sort of undeveloped, if you like, because Leighton House, although they had bought the rights, or bought the whole team basically, they still didn't have uh, the budget to really carry on. It, uh, it sort of uh, accumulated in that really uh, underdeveloped car. Beautiful looking car, uh, but just undeveloped, which is a real shame. But uh, the car sort of carried on throughout 1991 in a modified version. The car was, was called a different chassis name, but you can see basically it was just an updated uh, 1990 car for the 1991 season and also for 1992 as well. The, the, the team was basically a shadow then. The Leighton House Company had gone and uh, and uh, the team was sort of resorting to uh, race by race sponsors. Sorry, I've got a bit of wind. I'll uh, try to bring it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the team was pretty much uh, in its death blows by uh, or death throes by 1992. So, uh, but it's basically the same car throughout that whole time, just a modified livery and uh, a renamed team. It reverted back to the March team by 92 as Leighton House had, uh, whether it had gone bankrupt or just pulled out because a lot of uh, dodgy things were going on uh, behind the closed doors. But uh, nonetheless, they produced a beautiful car. And uh, what I've noticed though, some uh, footage that uh, appeared recently of the 1990 season sort of begs the question, did Adrian Newey ever have a full head of hair? It's uh, it's one of those many uh, many things that uh, many mysteries of Formula One really. It's uh, one of those many things, one of those things that uh, sort of plagues on the mind. But uh, hey ho, there we go. But uh, yeah, the uh, Leighton House, what's it called? The GC901. That's a hell of a mouthful. But uh, I suppose it's nothing compared to the uh, Aston Martin Red Bull Honda, which will be uh, for 20, 2019. But uh, that's for another day. But uh, onto the model itself. I'm just <coughs> trying to get a bit comfortable. This is a Spark model, of course. It's uh, a resin model, so it's not exactly die cast. So it's it's sort of resin plastic, but uh, that's not a big deal. Uh, beautiful car. And once again, though, as it's Spark, it's static as well. So the wheels don't turn, the wheels don't move at all. So it's it's completely static. But you know, you're never going to play with it. Are you? It's never going to roll up down the shelf. 
like I do sometimes. But uh, yeah, not a bad car, or well, a bad model anyway. So what we'll do, we'll turn the car around and try not to scuff the tyres. And we'll do a, a quick tour over the top of the car. We need to do the cockpit uh, detailing first. So once again, now as this is a new e car from this era, the cockpit is virtually non-existent in terms of space. But uh, you've got a steering wheel in there, uh, a rev counter, and that's pretty much it. You've got a few buttons on the steering wheel, but they are not detailed. They're not painted, if you like, but... Yeah, that's no, no big issue there, but looking over the nose, a very short nose as well. It's sort of uh, Adrian Newey's sort of trademark at the time. It's, it followed on to this FW14. So if I turn the car around, you get a side-on profile of the nose. You can see it's very, very droopy. It droops right down, and it's very pointy nose as well. So if I turn it face on, you get an idea there. So you can see the uh, nose. Once again, there's the light. I do apologise for the light. It is uh, summertime here in the UK, but. Uh, Natural light sort of doesn't work whenever I do these videos. But so we look down at the BP nose there. It looks like it's a, a separate moulded piece of plastic, so it's not painted, it's a mold it's a, a green moulded piece, so that's a bit weird, but never mind. The front wing there, very basic front wing, nothing compared to today's. You've got the front suspension there, very nice as well. Got the detailing there, got the front tyres. The rear tyres up there, of course, and I haven't done the measuring. I did say this in my last video of, of the Williams FW11 that the Spark model wheels tyres are not quite the right shape or not quite the right size. I think they're slightly too small for this uh, for these models. Uh, I haven't actually measured them because I can't be bothered to get the other cars out of the box to compare in size. So um, the uh, <sighs> the endeavour continues. So. Uh, I will get onto that one day. But uh, we'll have a look around the back of the car now. So we'll swing it around that way and get the big fat ass of this car. And then you can see the sculpting of the back end of the car. So we'll just zoom in there. Got all the detailing there. The rain light. Got the massive diffuser. It sort of puts uh, today's diffusers to shame, really. Got the rain light gearbox. Look, quite hidden all the detailing on this car. I mean, the bodywork does recline quite far back to the rear wing. So there's not a lot of detail on show. So look around this way, the rear wing which is supported by these small pins down here so the rear wing is really solid, it's not going to bend or break at all well it'll probably bend but it won't, you know, it's not going to fall off just looking at it so just look around this way, the ladies in the house at the side, got the intakes or radiator exhaust there got intake there, beautiful detailing at the side nicely applied decals and paint I mean the, the light I've got does not show the paint uh, you know, it doesn't do it justice. I mean, the the green, the, the the pale blue paint is is beautiful to look at, but it's just the uh, the light I have does not show it. So the Leighton House branding on the top of the chassis there. You've got the two aerials as well. We're going to look at Ivan Capelli there. Uh, his helmet does look a bit bare, but with this model, it does come with a set of uh, Marlboro decals as well, so you can put them on the car or the drivers overalls if you like so you've got one for the helmet and probably one either side of the uh, cockpit so the model did come with those that's no big issue so here we go there so like I said it does look a bit bland at the moment but I could apply the decals I just can't be bothered right now so I look down the nose there got the big big aerodynamic lumps on the side here it could be active suspension I'm not sure if this car ever had active suspension I think it's just the way the suspension is set up on this car for the chassis there dust on it already right? got scrub tyres it's like blistering on these tyres, so it's quite a nice detail there. Whether that's intentional, I don't know, but it does give a quite nice effect on the front tyre there. And on the rear tyre as well, it's focused. Not quite as uh, scrubbed, so I think it may just be sort of production error sort of thing. So it's the same with the rear as well and over there. So the front tyres are blistered, scrubbed slightly, but I think that's just uh, an error in production. So that is... Uh, all that gubbins there, so we'll just zoom out a second and try and get a look underneath. There's nothing really to show underneath, apart from three massive screw holes, so we'll just turn it round and then tip it up. And try not to get the fingerprints on it. So I'll try and tip it up without breaking anything. So I'll tip it up that way. And like I said, there's not much to show under here. You've got the uh, big screw holes, you've got the exhaust there and in the diffuser. Nicely made diffuser there. And also going along up to the underside of the chassis, to the front wing there, and the underside of the suspension. Very nicely done. And a bit of overlap there. Uh, so yeah, not a bad floor. I mean, it's a flat bottom car, of course. It's pre-94, or pre-Germany 94. 
And you've got a radiator duct or radiator pipe in there. I didn't notice that at first. So you've got a bit of radiator detailing in there. Is it the same on the other side? I don't think it is. I didn't see it on that side. Uh, no, it's, it's empty on that side. So there's no uh, radiator detailing there. So have a look. One more look down the chassis. So sort of get the T cam view. Even though this car didn't have the T cam. And uh, that was sort of being a view. Looking into the cockpit there. So overall, not too bad. So we'll get one more top top view profile. So you can see the size of the car. Sort of in profile, the coke bottle shape. And that is the car. Uh, with detailing there. Of course, one eighteenth scale. It's going to be quite large. <laughs> And uh, being 180 scale as well, the price goes with it as well. So, um, not sure what the price of this thing is in the current state because, uh, once again, this was not something I bought myself. Uh, but I don't really know what to do about price or, or trying to tally up the price on this thing because, uh, like I say, I've been uh, sort of out of the market for a little while. But uh, I think if you if you go to CK Models, I think they'll probably do the best uh, the best price for this model, probably in the hundred pounds region but uh, you know, it's entirely up to you if you want to buy this thing I would recommend it, it's just you've got to get a display case to put it in as well because it comes in a big polystyrene lump uh, in fact talking about that I might as well review the box as well so i put the card on one side, we'll have a quick look at the box the box is a big that, that is the box, the box is huge so that's the box there got the side there, got the top there, that's the, uh, the proper display piece there and you got the uh, back of the box, the other side of the box and then the front of the box there so it's, there's not a lot to say on the box but at least you've got writing that tells you what it is and also uh, all the legal jargon on the bottom there so that's the box, check that to one side and bring our car back so yeah there we go that is pretty much all I have to say on the uh, the Leighton house, it's a beautiful car and it's just a shame that they haven't produced more cars from this era, I mean 1990 uh, did produce a lot of fantastic cars. I think all the cars looked pretty good that year. I mean, the cars specifically in my eye that should be made are the uh, the Larousse. Was it the LH or is it the L I think it was the LC90, wasn't it? The, the Larousse LC90. I think it was when a Guri Suzuki finished third at Suzuka. So that's that's a car I would like in 118. Also the Benetton of that year as well, which also f finished first and second at that said Grand Prix in Suzuka so that's another car I'd like in 118 um, but pretty much all the cars of that year, I mean even the Williams FW13 that year, it wasn't the best looking car but I mean it's still a car that won races and I think it's, it should be sort of brought up into 118 scale, whether it be by Spark or Mini Champs or Look Smart or any of the other companies that are uh, uh, doing this sort of thing I really think someone should uh, divulge into that sort of uh, realm um, Especially from, like I say, 1990, 1989 as well. Um, because, because really all you're getting from those years is McLarens and Ferraris. Or just McLarens in most cases. So I really would like uh, other these companies to sort of divulge into those areas. So definitely a Benetton and a LaRousse from this year. Uh, also the Ligier. The Ligier from 89, 1990 was an absolute stunner as well. It was a bag of shit, but it was a good looking car. So that's one I would like as well. That's my opinion. I mean, it's not what everyone else is, but uh, hey, here, there we go. Um, but yeah, I mean, sort of with all the cars that are produced, I don't think most of those cars are produced at 143. I know the LaRousse and the Benetton have been produced at 143 um, by Mini Champs or Spark. No, not Spark, by Mini Champs and the old Onyx models as well, but I don't really rate those ones, those early, early Onyx models. Um, but I don't think the DJ has been produced at all. Something to think about, yeah, but uh, never mind. Um, before I go and review, finish this review, I'll just move the car to one side and just point out I have been divulging into other realms. I mean, if we look here, a 143, sorry, a 143 Arrows Yamaha. This is my first 143rd scale Mini Chance model that I've bought, re uh, bought for a long time, really, because I did have a load of them, but I sold them. But I just started getting into these again, uh, mainly just for this car, really. But I bought this one. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. The case is a bit knackered. But, uh, yeah, if you want me to review these, start reviewing these 143rd scale models. I will do, because, I mean, the arrows, this particular arrows, is absolute dog bollocks in terms of looks, uh, appearances, and things like that. I mean, it is my absolute favourite on it, uh, favourite arrows. Because Damon Hill drove it as well, but uh, there we go. 
but this is also another one that needs to be produced in 1 18th scale but uh, never mind so that's something there so that's the 1 43rd arrows what else have I got here we've got also a 1 43rd Tyrrell as well from 1995 that's sort of I bought that along with that really but uh, there we go the case is a bit knackered but the car is fine inside from uh, the Tyrrell Yamaha Ukyo Katayama so yeah that's uh, another one there uh, also we had to do had to do this didn't we but uh, the old Onyx models there we go Onyx but uh, I quite like these ones the ones in these cases sort of from 93 to 97 are quite good I mean they are quite nicely detailed uh, compared to their earlier models where they sort of made them a bit crude but uh, I quite like these ones I mean you got the, you got the wing mirrors on them for a start but uh, the detailing on them it's like just remove the case and get a better look at it but uh, I really do appreciate these ones I mean they are quite nice to look at I mean a lot of these cars you wouldn't many chance wouldn't even touch so I, I do appreciate these ones I mean they're, they're crude and they're, they're quite cheap so they're definitely one for the, uh, the collection if you're into these sort of things I mean I know a lot of people wouldn't go near them but you know I'm, I'm a collector I'll collect anything so that is my opinion anyway so that's the Onyx ones and also I, I did mention this in a couple of videos back. I have started collecting the uh, the F1 car collection subscription, you know, the the magazine, um, and I've got a few of those as well. So I've got uh, this McLaren MP4 uh, 2B from 1985. I've added the decals myself, um, but uh, the car itself is fine. I mean, I, I do like these things. I mean, I will, if you want me to, do a review of these as well. I mean, they are a bit. Some of them are a bit iffy. I well, don't say iffy, but some of them are a bit cheaply made. But this one and a lot of the other ones I have are the absolute dog's bollocks. I mean, they are brilliant. I do love them, and uh, I would recommend getting them if you're in, if you're into collecting the smaller models. Then for for the price, you can't really go wrong. So, um, and I will just turn the camera around so you can see. I've got a, a load of them up there, so you can see I've got them all up there. So various different uh, ones up there, from Ligiers to Mercedes and. Ferraris and marches and BRMs and all things like that. So yeah, that's uh, those are my ones there. So I'll just turn the camera back. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll review those ones. I mean, I, I do love these models, and uh, I'm actually due another delivery soon as well. Most of the ones I've got, I bought on eBay. I think I've got about five that have that have come from the subscription subscription. So um, I will do a review of these ones later on as well. Whether a review of each one or or do the the whole lot in one go, but. It's up to you if, you if you're interested in that sort of thing. So uh, we will move these out of the way. So get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And get rid of that. Uh, I've also been requested to do the Lotus E20 as well. I do have the Lotus E20. It's there. But it's in the show car form. So it's in the E21 colours. So if you want me to do a review of this car. Um, it will be for the E20. Because... It is the E20, but uh, don't be confused by the colour scheme, um, because it is in the 2013 colours, even though it's a 2012 car. So if you want me to do a review of this anyway, despite the colour scheme, then I will do, so, so don't worry about that one. But uh, that'll be for another day. And also the Red Bull up there, I keep mentioning that one, the Barago Red Bull. I love that car as well, but uh, that'll be for another day. And also the Ferrari down here, I keep wanting to do that one, the F2004, but uh, I will get to do that one another day as well. So I've got plenty lined up. But uh, not just right now. So I'm just sort of doing a review, sort of one or two a week if I can, just sort of get back into the routine, um, and then sort of do things more on a week, uh, on a sort of daily basis if I can. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. So that's the uh, the Leighton House. That is those cars there, and the ones to my right. And uh, I think we'll end it there. So this is Rich signing off, logging off, disappearing, um, and I shall return with another video. So. Uh, Bye for now.